you've been playing on Java for a long time and you want to convert your world over to the Bedrock version, maybe it's because you see that all this fancy RTX stuff and you just want to test it out. Maybe you want to just play on a different version that may be a little bit more suitable for your slow computer. I'm not sure what the reason, but this is how you convert Java worlds into Bedrock world. Some context, Java is the original version of Minecraft. Bedrock is the pocket edition of Minecraft, which can be played on consoles, phones, tablets, and there is a Windows 10 version for your computer. In order to convert your worlds, you do need to have a PC because we're going to need to run an external program that is called MCC Tool Chest, and that will convert your Java save into a Bedrock save. I'm not gonna cover how you would get that save from your computer onto, say, a phone or a console or whatever. We're just gonna show it running in the Windows 10 version of Minecraft. So here we are inside of Minecraft and this is my Java save. I'm running the Java version of Minecraft right now. This is a world that I've used an awful lot. It was up on my realm that I used to record a lot of OMG crafts. So it has a ton of customizations added to it. So what a, we also have this pick with efficiency five. Here we have some shulker boxes. These shulker boxes have smooth stone inside of them which should not convert and then a piece of stone inside of them actually this one doesn't so get get out of here and we'll just clear our inventory pick this one up and then throw that in there so that'll have one piece of stone and a whole bunch of smooth stone which I won't be in the new version so we'll see how it deals with that also I have all of these different command block set up here this will teleport me around my world using specific coordinates so you can see that in the chat log down there and then i also have some functions so to teleport around i don't think functions will transfer but we'll, we'll check that out and also just to show you one extra spot so we went to the ice farm we go to suspicious stew area and this is what this looks like signs with text on it and some things like that. So we'll take a look at all of this once the conversion is complete to see how well it did with converting. So this is the tool that we're going to be using to convert our Java world into a bedrock world. It's called the MCC Tool Chest and it is found at mcctoolchest.com. In order to run it, you have to go to the downloads area and download it. Who'd have thought? There's a few different downloads on here and the one that we're going to be using is the Tool Chest PE bedrock version in parentheses and if for some reason it doesn't work later on in the future you may need to download this c++ runtime most likely it's already on your computer but for some reason you run into issues it's linked right there so go ahead and click that and have it downloaded to your computer next you're going to unzip it and run the exe and install it on your computer and eventually you will get to this an open program you know that you open from the start menu or whatever and we're gonna start from here because i assume you can install it yourself first thing that we want to do is go to tools convert and then to bedrock so we're gonna go from java into bedrock don't be a dummy like me and if you're playing in the world that you want to convert make sure that you save and close out of that in fact just close out of minecraft in general okay once again tools convert to bedrock this is going to list all of the saves that you have in the generic save folder. It's a good idea to back up your world before you do this, just in case something goes horribly wrong. If for some reason your save is in a different location than the default location, then you'll have to navigate it by hitting select folder. But I have mine, whoops, that was the wrong world. Here we go, this is the correct world uh, and I have mine in, in the correct location. So you're gonna click that and basically by default, everything is just how it needs to be. Just go ahead and click convert and you're done. I did like the convert to aquatic format 1.13 plus, but I haven't really noticed any big difference when choosing that versus anything else. So once you have your save here, click convert. It's going to run for a rather long time. And then we'll just come back once this finishes. Obviously this would take longer if you have a bigger world because it's 
processing every single chunk. And there we go, conversion complete. It converted 25,830 chunks for my world. We're just gonna go ahead and close out of this. So hooray, we did it, but we're not done yet with this program. Head on over to file and then save as. If you actually go in here to level.dat stuff, you can see that there is information here. You got your overworld and a whole bunch of chunk stuff. But anyway, go on over here, hit save as, and then this will be a list of your bedrock worlds. I don't have many. I just have this one called my world. And we're gonna create a new world. If you wanted to, for some reason, overwrite a current world you have, you could do that too. But we're just gonna call this OMG craft and hit okay. And now this will save a new world in the Windows 10 area of my saves in the default location. So go ahead and start up your Windows 10, Minecraft for Windows 10. You can tell that I'm in Windows 10 because look, I have a marketplace that's not available on Java. Maybe that's why I'm converting my worlds because I want to download all the cool stuff from the marketplace. Either way, click play. And if all went well, you should see a new world. This one is called OMG Craft. I'm in survival. We'll change that here. Actually, I'll just go ahead and edit that. I've got being creative, baby. We can also come down here. I'm gonna just do a few things. Just make sure that everything goes great. Here we go. Loading it up, cross our fingers, and bam, we are in the world. Now, every time I've done this, it has brought me into a new location. And so I believe that this is the spawn for the world, uh, not the spawn that I had set. So that changed, but I can just fly back over. Let's see if my function works. I'd be like, I'd be shocked. My function work? No, my function, it was, I think, OMG TP. I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, function not found. Okay, function didn't work. That's fine to expect that. I do know that I can just teleport myself to zero. There we go. Here we are back in the world. Whoa, wait a second. What on earth? I thought that this smooth stone. What? Smooth. Oh, it does exist. What am I? I'm such a big dummy. Well, I just learned a thing. Okay, so let's take a look around. First off. Looks like all of our things connected. So we have our stairs they connected. Our chest seems to have connected just fine. Uh, we have smooth stone, which I'm a dummy. Uh, it looks like my maps did not uh, convert over. So these, in fact, if I click it, oh, look, it gives me a map. That's invisible, whoa. Okay, so maps did not convert over. Uh, let's check out this command block. So is it written give okay so this shouldn't do anything yeah so it keeps the exact same command am i not hearing anything apparently i had it muted and now i am also going to turn off the music because who listens to the music if you listen to the music tell me in the comments because you might be weird okay let's check out this chest aha so it is a leather tunic without color so it's just leather my diamond pickaxe does not have an enchantment on it let's check out the shulker what is inside okay so it did keep all of the smooth stone and the stone inside of that shulker box so that is good to know but oof, ooh not having enchantments on my pick that's a big deal also these doors did not convert correctly so they open the same direction not towards each other they were double doors before let's go check out my ice farm and that teleport worked because nothing has changed with that teleport. So the ice farm looks uh, looks a little bit broken. Yeah, so the redstone obviously works different in bedrock than it does in Java. So if I just come over here just to stop these loops right here, it will stop and kind of, but obviously this is a, a broken bit of redstone because it's just not the same. Okay, and but there we go. Okay, so now all that redstone just broke, but that's better for our lives. Let's check out this suspicious stew area. So most of this, this all looks pretty good so far. I mean, I, other than, you know, the paper doll thing that you have in the corner, it, you'd be hard pressed to tell that these worlds had been converted. I mean, it looks like it's all just running just great. I mean, especially right here, other than the maps. I mean, in a normal world, that would be fine. Now, there are definitely some bugs. And as you go through the world, I'm sure that you would find more. One of them is bubble columns. And I knew that this would happen. Bubble columns, for some reason, have an issue with bedrock to Java conversion. So we have some bubble columns here. And all we have to really do is just update this. And then it will fill in 
all the different water areas. So we can get these bubble columns back, but we just need to go through the process. It deletes all the water if it doesn't work out super great. And then we just need to update the water so that it fills itself in. Oh man, the rotation on my uh, end rods. That messed up, so that's, 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 it's weird. It's exactly backwards than what it was. That's interesting. So something I was definitely curious about was when the previous chunks that it had rendered met unloaded chunks before, what happens? What does the world generation do? And it looks like this is pretty, this is kind of what I expected, is that there's just a harsh line. So this would have been old world that was converted into new world that is newly generated. One of the ways I absolutely know this is new world that is generating is that you don't get these logs, these fallen over trees in Java edition. You only get that in the bedrock edition. So you have your old world over here and your new world over there. So whenever there is a line, a transition line, it just starts over with generating from the seed of the world, not generating from the seed of the converted world, the previous world. Some of these edges are obviously more obvious than others, but these chunks were, I, I don't know which one's new and which one's old at this point, but you can see you got a mountain over here going into an ocean. It's, it's kind of an abrupt change here. And that's just because if it doesn't have any information for that chunk, then it will generate a new one with a new seed. Also, in the generation settings, we only converted the overworld, not the nether. So this will be a completely new nether. Although I don't remember what I had in the nether. Actually, this might, this, <laughs> this nether seems familiar. I don't know if I've seen this nether before. Is this converted or not? Either way, in the tool, you can easily check both the nether and the end as something you would want to convert. But uh, your portals will probably not link up. That's another thing that I've, I've seen as being an issue. We can also go to the end here. This is a brand new end. I definitely know that because we'll, we'll have the dragon over here. Hello, dragon. Meet your maker, dragon. That's right. With one command, I can kill you. Get this experience for no reason because I'm not really hanging out in this world after this, but let's, let's go back. Another interesting thing is that it did bring over armor stands. So you have some armor stands. It doesn't look like they have the enchantments that I had on them the last time. And also I believe that most of these armor stands were holding weapons, but they are not anymore. So they don't have any of the weapons that they were holding before. All in all, I would say that this conversion went really, really well. There's definitely differences in the game. There's the, I think the enchantments is the biggest thing. And I'm sure that there's some stuff that I haven't noticed yet because I just haven't played for hours and hours in this world to compare it to my other world. Now, now, if for whatever reason you're having a lot of problems with the previous tool that I showed off, the MCC tool chest, there is another option called the Universal Minecraft Converter. The biggest difference is that this costs money. This is not a free option, but if you're having a really hard time with the other tool for one month, it's like a weird monthly pricing thing, uh, you can get it for 15 bucks. Some of the things that it mentions that it focuses on is making sure that your blocks are correct so that you know, you got facing blocks the correct direction, you have your redstone connecting and all that sort of stuff. So this may be better for you if you are having a lot of problems with the other converter. But there you have it, a way to take your Java saves and convert them into bedrock saves. I think that this is awesome that we're seeing more and more parity between the two versions of Minecraft. Oh, obviously I would like a Minecraft created tool, something that could easily convert the two worlds, but there is so, I mean, it's literally a different game. So there's so much data that needs to be converted. Currently only these community tools will work, uh, but I'd love to see something official in the future. That would be super duper rad. Thanks so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a big ol' thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.